it's always good to try out and to understand better this uh, a bit complicated the theoretical mathematical formulations using a python example so here we're using, having a python example for denoising speech so the first part here we're importing our python libraries we are going to use the scipy signal and numpy to handle um, calculations we are going to use ipython display to listen to some sounds we are going to use uh, import to Librosa and Wave to load audio files, and we're going to use struct. So this is in conjunction with import a wave that is going to use here in this wave read functions we are defining. So uh, Librosa has this very convenient way of loading audio, but also is uh, interesting to see this different approach using this wave library. So here we're defining uh, this uh, wave read that takes as an argument. Uh, sound file, so we call wave open sound file. So then we um, have this uh, parts here. We're getting the number of channels, getting the um, samples, the um, sampling rate, number of bytes per sample. And here we are plotting here. So it's a mono one audio two bytes per sample, sixteen bits. Sampling rate is thirty two kilohertz, and this is the length of our audio. So this is how now we're here we're using this truck to unpack and transform it to shorts and here we have our so let's uh, run the cells and here we can listen to our audio to administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so so this is the speech we're going to work first. Later on, we are using Iron Maiden, uh, which is much more exciting than this um, example here. But now we are going to add some noise, with zero mean white noise. So this is what we are doing in this part here. We are using the NumPy random to add noise. And this is the noise signal. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter. And yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. So we see there's a lot of uh, white noise there. At this part here, we are transforming our arrays X and Y into matrices and transposing them into a column. And here we are defining this A matrix. So we are going to use 10 coefficients for our Wiener uh, filter. And this is what we're doing here. We are building this um, matrix A. So here we have our noisy uh, signals Y. And we can see that there is a shape of uh, 100,000 rows and 10 columns. So this is our matrix. And here we are computing the Wiener filter. So the trick here is to allow a filter delay, the flip it filter delay of five samples to get a better working denoising. Yeah? This corresponds to the center of our Wiener filter. So then the desired signal is going from five to 100,005. So we're having this delay of five samples to uh, get better denoising. And now uh, our X and Y are matrices. And when we use this operator um, star, this is the matrix multiplication. So our H, now we're having here this A transpose times A times A transpose times X. And then like we've seen uh, in these equations, here here we have this it's uh, here so here is our the impulse response of our Wiener filter observe that this is the non flipped impulse response and we see we have a delay of four samples so the peak is at sample number 4 we can also see here uh, the frequency response using our old friend FRAC-Z from SciPy signal. And here we have our frequency response. Here we can see that the resulting filter has a somewhat a low pass characteristic because our speech signal has energy mostly at low frequencies. At high frequencies we have mostly noise and it makes sense to have more attenuation there. This attenuation curve of this Wiener filter 
also has some similarity to the speech spectrum. If we compare it with the spectrum of a white noise, then we see that at low frequencies the speech is dominating and at high frequencies noise is dominating. Hence, we need to remove or attenuate that um, later this uh, noisy part of the spectrum. So here we can uh, plot the spectra of speech and noise together. This is what we are doing. We have speech, noise. Here we have in red is the white noise spectrum. Here we have our speech spectrum in blue. And also we are plotting the Wiener filter. We're just giving it um, some shift uh, to get closer. And we can see it has some shape that kind of goes along with speech. Here we see that speech dominates the spectrum only at the low and middle frequencies. Noise dominates at other frequencies and it makes sense to suppress the noise frequencies. So now we can use L filter to filter. So we need to convert the matrix back to a one dimensional array. And this so we are using filter here. We are flipping the impulse response. We are transforming it into an array. Also transform our Y back into an array. And this we are applying the all filter from SciPy signal. And what we have is to administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. So let's back to the let's go back to the original. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. Okay, this is the noisy. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. And now the filtered version. To administer medicine to animals is frequently a very difficult matter, and yet sometimes it's necessary to do so. So we can hear that the signal now sounds more muffled. The high frequencies are indeed attenuated, which results uh, reduces the influence of the noise. But it is still a question if it actually sounds better to human ears. We can see there's still to a lot of noise there. This Wiener filter could now also be applied to other speech signals with similar frequency characteristics um, for signal and noise. Yeah? But uh, now let's compare the mean square quadratic error, the MSE. So this was the um, optimization. What we wanted to do here is to have this uh, um, mean, uh, mean squared quadratic error to see if it's uh, reduced using this filter. So this is for the noisy signal. We are computing here the uh, mean squared quadratic error. And we have this value here. So here we have for the Wiener filter signal. Uh, we need to take into account these four samples delay from our filter. So we have this shift here to compensate this four seconds delay. But we see that there is indeed um, much less. So maybe it's almost uh, two times uh, less than the um, noisy version. 